Five minute mark has just now been given on pre grid, so with that, we'll start this long grid rundown. On the pole for this one in the 00, zero car, Lee Keane from Clavaris, Florida. The 1980 Porsche 935 alongside Charles Nierberg in car 70, Dallas, Texas. 1980 Porsche 935 K3. Fred Kamer is inside row two in car zero T out of Austin, Texas. That's another 1980 Porsche 935 K3 in Interscope livery. Next to him is Patrick Long. He's in car number five. It's a 1983 Porsche 935 Coca-Cola Aiken Motorsports car. Fifth row inside starting ninth, number 68, Tom Van Overbeek. San Jose, 1974 Porsche RSR. Alongside in car 54, Jürgen Barth from Sackenheim, Germany, 1975 Porsche Kramer 911 3 liter Carrera RSR. Inside row six is Steve Schmidt, the honest engine boy out of Newport Beach, California, pedaling the Regella Road Atlanta 1976 Porsche 935 K3. Inside the 17th row, starting 33rd, number 61A, driven by Alan Benjamin, Boulder, Colorado, 75 Porsche 3 liter Carrera RSR. Completing the row in a 79 Porsche 911 IMSA GTU car from Galena, Ohio, Ron Thomas, car 64. 35th on the grid. Inside row 18 is Jerome Rodella out of Monte, California, 1982 Porsche 935. And on his hip is car number zero, Tom Hacker out of Santa Ana in a 1978 Porsche 935. 37th starter, car number 98, Ed Palmer, Oxnard, California, 74 Porsche 911 IROC. 77 Porsche 911 Carrera RSR alongside from Portland, Oregon, Cameron Healy, car 11. Okay, we should point out we're into cars right now that probably are not going to make the grid because we don't have times from yesterday. Next up was Paul Resnick out of New Rochelle with his 1970 Porsche 914 6, car number 16T. Then David McNeil, car number 22, is his RSR, and we know they didn't bring that car. 21st row, starting 41st inside. Number 86, Bruce Levin, Mercer Island, Washington. 1977 Porsche 935. As they start the pace lap, alongside him, scheduled to be there. 101, the driver, Alan Turpin, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. 75, Porsche Carrera, RSR 3 liter. And the last two cars that were entered are Jim Calcia from Sunnyvale, California, 1973 RSR. David Withers, 121. A 74 Porsche Carrera. So it looks like two of the cars that did not have time did fall in line at the back of the grid. Number 98, Ed Palmer, in his 1974 Porsche 911 IROC. And also uh, Chronicle 101, Alan Turpin, in the 75 Porsche Carrera RSR 3 liter. This is Race Group 5, Carrera Trophy cars. Tire scrubbing going on on the face lap. The single face lap is it's a Time of event, 30 minute race.
Pace car has pitted. We're getting ready to go green to start this race. Prescott, Kelly, why don't you launch them? Okay, Dick, here we come. The cars are on the pit straight. They're coming up the starter, and they got a green, green, green. Lee Keen is off and into the point, just ahead of Charlie Niebuhr. And we're looking back in the field right now. Checking to see if Bruce Canepa is out there in car 12. He came across the line 35th, driving car number 12. Okay, one of the good stories in this race is going to be the contest between the 935s running up front right now and Bruce Canepa coming through the field at a very full tilt. In yesterday's running, we had about uh, four laps of Lee Keen and Bruce Canepa basically going head to tail. Lee ended up with fast lap at 130.66. Bruce was second fastest lap of the day in a 131.3. So they were very closely matched and had a hard-fought battle for four or five laps. May we have the cars for race group six. Stuttgart Cup cars to the pre-grid. Cars for race group six to the pre-grid now, please. Okay, as they come up to the strike, this time Lee Keen has opened a very wide lead over car number 70, Charlie Newberg. Fred Cameron's right behind him, then Patrick Long pulls him up, Stephen Harris comes through, and March Hotchkiss in the 73 RS. Donahue in the RSR, followed immediately by Tom Van Overbeek in his RSR. Keen on the opening lap, almost three full seconds quicker than Nierberg, the second place car, car 7-0. Just in case you think Lee's not motivated, his opening lap was a couple of hundreds faster than his fast lap yesterday. at the head of the field, and then we've got, I'm sorry, six 935s, and we have four RSRs. And Lee Keen, as a result of that spin, has dropped to 29th overall, from 1st to 29th, so he's going to have his work cut out for him. Okay, and Tommy and Scoring gave us a hit fake by showing the start, but we now do know that Bruce Canepa in car number 12, the plain white rapper 935, very, very fast car chose not to start today. So our race from the back of the field is not going to be Lee Keen in double zero. Well, the line. zero zero car of Lee Keen has come to a stop rolling slowly. A report from the turn workers, we got him in the video shot. The car has come to a stop. Evidently a mechanical problem now with that car. That's the car of Lee Keen who turned the fastest lap in this race. 
then spun and now has some sort of a problem. The car is stationary. Looks like he's in the infield area. Just at the exit of turn one. Charles Nierberg in car 7-0 is your race leader. Patrick Long in pursuit in the five car, then it's 85 Rotola. Double standing yellows, it's going to be a safety car situation. The pace car will come out to lead the field around while they retrieve the 0-0 zero zero car that's at the exit of turn two, I believe. Mechanical black flag for your third place car, number 85, Rodella. So attrition really taking its toll here. First your leader spun, then dropped the 29th and came to a stop. Now your third place car, number 85, is going to be showing a mechanical black flag. He is going to have to call at the pits. Nierberg, your race leader, car 7-0, uh, pulls into position behind the pace car that will lead the field around the during his pace car standing yellow situation. No passing is allowed. He allowed to close up on the field. Boy, the 85 car smoking heavily. That's the one they're going to give the mechanical black to. And he's pulled out of the racing line, staying right in case he is spreading oil. He doesn't want to put it in the racing line. Looks like they picked up uh, Lee Keane's car, the zero, 0 car, down to exit one or two, and uh, they're getting him out of the way once they get that cleared. And the emergency vehicles and tow vehicles uh, are off the track. We'll be able to go back to green flag racing. And then if he's a good driving, car number 85 was able to take the exit, so Jerome Rodella pulled his car in back at turn five into the paddock, and that will save us perhaps having to put kitty litter on for oil. Yeah, that was the 85 car, the Coca-Cola Porsche that was smoking quite heavily. There we have the cars in race group six, the Stuttgart Cup cars to the pre-grid. Cars in race group six to the pre-grid now. Well, you know, you get a little misfortune, then you get a little good fortune. Our misfortune is we were really looking forward to a race between Bruce Canepa and Lee Keene this morning. Bruce in the plain white wrapper number 12, 935, a perennial winner here. And Lee Keene, a newcomer in David McNeil's double zero, 935K3. Both those cars are now out, but we're now going to have a really good race between Nierberg and Pat Long. Nierberg in the sacks, 935. Pat Long in the number five. Fab car, Aiken Coca-Cola car, as they go back to green and Nierberg, and here comes Long looking outside. Long look inside, then he looks outside, now he tucks back in behind. He's going to see what Nierberg's going to do and react off of that. Tucks right in behind him as they go through the Andretti hairpin. Less than half a car length separating the two as they come out of turn two and go into turn three. Nierberg in 70 is your race leader, along the pursuer in car number five. Harris now running third in the seventh car. 
followed by Keimer in 0T and Branson Webster in 42. That's your top five. Now we have two very different cars at the lead of the pack because the sax bar is basically a Porsche Kramer K3, whereas the number five Aiken Coca-Cola car was a semi-monocoque, I guess you'd call it, built by Fabcar. Uh, for Bob Aiken, also known as the last 935. So it's a very different animal, and it was the 935 that actually ran into the era of the 962s. And they're both listed as over three liters. Yeah, motor's quite similar, construction, uh, construction of the cars is quite different. Speed should be approximately the same based on what we've seen so far this weekend. They're about four tenths of a second apart on fast lap times. They're still nose to tail as they come out of turn 11 and start uh, up the start finish straightaway. That's going to be completing lap six. Nierberg 70, long five. By the way, Patrick Long has already bested his best time from yesterday. His best time yesterday was a 138.05, and Patrick has turned a 131.35 today. So he's taken second, seven seconds off of yesterday's time. Um, Either he found the boost knob or they made a substantial adjustment on that car overnight. Nierberg has turned the quickest lap of any of the cars out there. His best lap, a minute 30.776. That's car 70, Charles Nierberg. We've got a couple of interesting cars racing together that just crossed the stripe. One of them is Timmy Pappas in the uh, Tim Pappas in the 924 GTS Club Sport, um, and with him is that very interesting car built in Pennsylvania, the 924 GTP. Of course, that's a Bob Holbert built car for IMSA GTU racing back in the day. Report that uh, Conor 8-0 spun over in turn four and then continued on track, William Kincaid. a change for a third spot on the inside of the track. Geimer in 0-2 goes around Harris and moves himself up into third spot. Let's see if he can hold it because he won't be third until he's scored in that position when he crosses the start-finish line. In the meantime, Nierberg leading in car 7-0, being pursued by Patrick Long in 5, and now new third-place car is 0-T, Geimer, followed by Harris in car 7. place just now coming up the start finish straightaway. Zero Keimer third. Harris fourth in car number seven. And Ranston Webster in car 42 running in the fifth spot. He's being pursued by Hotchkiss. So the driver's still in touch. A lot of changes could happen before this one is over with Van Overbeek in that number 68 car running seventh behind Hotchkiss. So Some good racing further back in the field.
98 car of uh, Seafried and Morris in 54. Having a good battle. I think Bus got that Jägermeister car. Yeah, that's the Jägermeister RSR. That belongs to Andrew Larson. And uh, Jürgen Barth came over from Germany to drive it this weekend. Okay, here come our leaders. Back onto the pit straight. Charlie Niebert, car number 70, still has a measure of Pat Long in the Aiken Coca-Cola car. Patrick is off less than two-tenths of a second. Slower than Newberg overall, follows him on the track, which makes sense. Then it's a full two, almost two and a half seconds back to fast time for Fred Keimer, who is in third place and just crosses the stripe now. Stephen Harris is running in fourth place in his 935. And then, of course, Ransom Webster in the pretty pink and the white 935, car number 42. Then we get our RSR runners. Mark Hutchkiss is the top of the RSRs, normally aspirated three liters, not turbocharged, followed by Tom Van Overbeek. Then we have Hawkins, and then we pick up Schmitz 935 in the ninth place. And we are just past the midpoint of this 30-minute race. Just past the halfway mark. Next up will be the cars in race group six, the Stuttgart Cup cars, our final race of the day and the weekend. Those cars should now be on pre-grid. Starting to work their way through traffic, a lot of times this can work as an advantage or perhaps a disadvantage to the lead car. Can afford him some breathing room, or if he gets stuck behind a car he's overtaking or makes the wrong choice on which side to go around, he can lose a position. So keep around Nierberg and 70 a race later, and Patrick Long in car number five. They're still running very close together as they start to work their way through traffic. Got a pretty good race uh, just exiting Andretti right now. And that's Bradley Harris in car number 61, the Brumos trimmed RSR. And he's given Steve Smith in the Road Atlanta 935 a whole lot of full mirror at this point. So that's a pretty good race between pretty disparate types of cars. We would guess that Smith has not got his car running at full capability since that's a turbocharged 935. Here come our leaders, and Pat Long is yeah, closed up. They've tightened it up because of the traffic. This is what I had anticipated. Traffic can sometimes really make a difference. And Long goes, takes the classic line way over to the right, and then swings back into the apex and tucks right in underneath Nierberg's wing as they exit turn two. Well, Dick, it looks like Nierberg's car has a little bit of torque and is able to pull Pat Long 
a little bit under acceleration. Long Star looks to be a good handling car and looks like Patrick can wheel it pretty well. It's going to be a very interesting end of this race. They're both 935s. Uh, their Berg's car is a Kramer. Yeah, Blue Burst car is a Kimmer, Kramer K3, a classic 935. And of course, Long's car we talked about is that Pep car built, semi monocoque car with a much different construction but very similar motors. Both of them twin turbocharged, so they have two smaller turbos that spool up pretty quickly. Unlike the early 935s, which had one big single that spooled up slowly with a big lag, these cars are much more responsive on the turbos. Still got to jump on them a little early to get maximum power coming out of a corner. And they're headed up the hill to the top of the course. And they're going to encounter some traffic when they get up there. I don't think they'll be able to dispose of it before they get to the top of the hill. Okay, here's the fight we were talking about earlier. Lloyd Hawkins has just taken his 935 around Steve Schmidt's 935, the Riella Road Atlanta car. And now our... Our 61 car, Bradley Harris, is get, trying to stay with both those turbocharged cars. Whoa! Oh, suddenly 68 slows precipitously. 68 just slowed precipitously, led both Schmidt and Harris around. Boeing slowed uh, that dramatically so quickly, you think maybe he lost a ship. Yeah, lost that looked ship. that looked more like a missed ship than anything else. You're right, absolutely does. Harris pushing hard, dropped a full wheel while drivers left coming through. Kicked up a lot of dust, kept going. No, when you do make a mistake like that in the car, you tend to really beat yourself up over it, but you can't do that. You just have to, as the Brits say, keep calm and carry on. Hope you didn't break anything. I think those gearboxes are pretty sturdy in these cars. Pursued by Patrick Long in car five. And Zero T. Keimer moved up in the third, as you mentioned. A lap or two ago, he got around Harris in the seventh car, dropped the fourth. Branson Webster running fifth in car 42. And Charlie Nieberg opened about a 10 car gap over Pat Long over the last two laps, so he's got himself a little breathing room right now.
Well, you know, flag over in turn two, kind of a 9-8 keep rate. They've been running eighth overall, slowed, and then just picked up and started going again. That'll probably cost them a position or two. Don't know what the problem was with the car. Five, five minutes to go in the session. Five minutes to go in this race. Nurburg still leading in car 7-0, followed by Patrick Long. Timer. Long's in five. Timer in zero. T. Harris in seven. And Webster in 42. Your top five. We need those cars for the Stuttgart Cup. Group six cars to the pre grid. Group six cars to the pre grid. That good battle between 93 and 61 just coming around turn 11 now and up to start, finish straight away. That's the battle for ninth. Oh, Harris, Harris just missed his shift. Whoa, he really missed that shift. That's such a shame. Harris uh, got through 11 side by side with Steve Smith and the uh, Yellow Road Atlanta 935 who then absolutely couldn't find the next gear. He'd been passed by at least a half a dozen cars. And Nierberg and Long right in the middle of that. Look at them going by uh, Ruben Bath now as they're going to two. More problems for car 98 Seafried as he stopped again and now continues slowly through turn three. Coming down to turn 11, working their way through traffic. Nierberg, long, 70 and 5. Yeah, Nierberg had to check up a little bit behind Steve Smith in 11, but Patrick wasn't able to take advantage of that. Wasn't quite close enough after uh, Nierberg had to check up. If I were a betting man, I would bet that your race leader is going to get the one lap sign next time by. Coming down through the course through about one and a half car lengths separating them as they come through the bottom down to turn eight and nine. This is Nierberg we're talking about at 70. Charles Nierberg and Patrick Long in car number five. Heading down into turn 11. Going to get a little bit of traffic for the lap on a car. They'll come up to start finish straight away and get the one lap sign. One more lap to go. First and second go by. Probably about four car lengths separating them as they cross the start finish line to begin a final lap. Long really closes it up going down into turn one and coming out of two. He's got it to about a half a car length. Nurburg's car seems to have a little more torque off that corner. He's able to accelerate better and get a better exit speed.
Through five on their way up the hill to speed for the last time this afternoon. With that, we'll again call the cars in race group six. Stuttgart Cup cars to the pre-grid, please. Group six cars to the pre-grid now. Going up the hill, Nürburgring able to use his power to pull away from Patrick. And then they get to the braking at the top of the hill and down through the course groove. Patrick closes it up. So here he comes. Coming under the rainy bridge down back in our view here at start finish. Charles Nierberg, your race leader in car 7-0. Will be looking for a checkered flag when he comes out of turn 11 and accelerates up the start finish straightaway. Had some traffic to check up behind, but he's going to be able to outdrag Patrick to the line. They split Tim Pappas in the 924 GTS, and we have our checker. Charles Newberg is our winner. Patrick Long runs second in car number five, the Bob Aiken Red Coca-Cola car. Third place car just now starting to set in the corkscrew. That's car number zero T, Keimer. Look at the flame coming out of the back of that zero car. That's unburned fuel that comes out of there when he lifts. These cars are pretty spectacular at night. Third place guard takes the checkered flag. Number zero T, Fred Keimer. Fourth place car number seven of Stephen Harris. And it should be Ransom Webster in number five taking the, in number 42, I'm sorry, taking the checker for fifth spot. We're looking for the first of our RSRs. Will be our sixth place finisher overall. He will be first among the normally asked And there he is, March Hotchkiss takes the car across, followed by Tom Van Overbeek. And then Steve Lawrence will be the third RSR separated. So the 935 car number 93 of uh, Steve Schmidt. Jorgen Barth will be your fourth RSR in Andrew Larson's Jägermeister RSR. He's in 10th place, Bill Ockerlund in car number 52, another RSR in 11th. Jeff Lewis, car number 55, another RSR finishes 12th overall. And in the hit over beak has beached it uh, somewhere out there on his cool off lap. Car number 80 off into the boonies as well. Plus, in course communication, we've got about six toes at the end of this one. A lot of cars to retrieve. Yeah, the corner worker is going to be out negotiating with some of these cars if, uh, see if they can uh, get home under their own power. So we have to tow five of them off. We're going to have a delay. Yeah, if they can pull them up to the top of the hill and cut them loose, gravity will bring them home. 